Well, Ghost Squad, welcome back. I want to just warn you, this week we're going to talk about um, a subject and a word that tends to make some people a little uncomfortable, mm. giggle, run, all kinds of things. Um, we're going to talk about sex. <laughs> we're going to talk the about birds. the birds <laughs> and the bees and, and the, the bees. trees. Bro, no, it's just wait. the birds and the bees, you guys. But I really feel like and hope <laughs> that this conversation is a one that would just allow us to demystify it and just get you more comfortable with talking about it, with talking about it amongst friends and with community um, and just dispelling some lies. I think that we each have a really unique experience with this topic. And so wherever you're at, I really, really hope that this speaks to you in some way. Are you guys ready? Yeah. yeah. Are you guys ready? Ready? crazy though. I'm excited. Like, think about the fact that for some weird reason, it becomes this weird squeamish thing. Yep. As soon as we bring up the topic, stuff, people are like, sex. And it's like, all right, let's have a real conversation. Let's talk about it. Mm -hmm. It's something that's natural. It's something that's beautiful. It's something that is a gift from God. Yeah. Right. Um, but yeah, let's, let's, let's run it. Let's, let's, let's run, run it. it. All right. Speaking of running it, I want to run it back. Oh. <laughs> I want to talk about your adolescence. I want to talk about how life or people um, or culture played a role, or even the church really played a role in how you saw sex um, and the impact that that, you know, had on how you saw it and even the choices that you made post that. Mm -hmm. I gotta think. Well, as for me, I know what the culture showed me. <laughs> Oh yeah, the culture showed me, boat. bro. We might be rowing together in this boat, bro. You might have been. <laughs> I, I was on the left, bro. you was on the right. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie to you. And I was I like, got my paddles, bro. I'm, I'm in ready. the, the, the waters. I'm ready. But oh, go hold ahead, it one. Ahead, my bad. Ahead. You got the right side. I'm yeah. at the left. Culture was like, get as many as you can. That's it's like gotta catch them all, Pokemon. Like mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying. Like, if you're not having them. sex with thirty seven thousand women, you're not a, a straight male. You know, literally, like you're, you're there's something wrong with your sexuality if you're not indulging in sexual activity at whatever age, right? Um, mm -hmm. so it's like sometimes I felt like the need to overly sexualize because I didn't want to be caught in a space where I felt like I was not like sexual, you mm -hmm. know, and just mm -hmm. being a regular guy, being yeah. attracted to a woman is enough, right? You know, yeah. and Growing up, it was like it was very hard to do. And as far as church, oh my gosh, <laughs> it's so confusing because yeah. the world is telling you get involved with as many sexual encounters as possible. But in church, it's like sex, marriage, no other explanation. Mm -hmm. No other. That's explanation. all you get. Yeah. You know, that's all I was yeah. expra explained. And it was like, mm -hmm. what do I do in between? You know, because mm -hmm. at some point I was getting convicted, and then at the other point I was like, I'm intrigued. Right. You know. So. Yeah. Like, yeah. I think that's the problem is we don't necessarily get the clear understanding from people that should be giving it to us. And for me, like I learned my first experience with what sex should look like came from culture, came from movies and television and things that I was watching at the time, MTV. Yep. And then after that, at a very young age, I was, was I 12 or 11, 11 or 12. I was in the, Ooh, how old was I? Maybe I was younger than that. I was in the, like, I think I was in the fourth grade. And I was exposed to pornography. Yeah. I was sitting in the library and basically all the guys around were like, hey, look up. And they said, the, the term that they said was look up Playboy sex. And I'm like, what in the world is this? Like, what, what's going on? Yeah. And so I'm sitting in the library and I, of course, do the search. And immediately I'm slamming the laptop down. I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> but it, it piqued my interest. Mm -hmm. yep. And it tugged on something that shouldn't have been opened up to me at that age. But because I didn't have any context, I figured, oh, well, that's what it's supposed to be. And I later would see how the effects of pornography and seeing sex from this twisted, perverse lens was impacting my life. Mm. Um, and so I learned my teachers, my first teachers for sex were movies, TV, culture, mm -hmm. pornography. Yeah. And then, you know, when you get into high school, they pass out condoms and they explain it to you and they tell you about the anatomy. But there's really no explanation as to the importance of it. Why does it matter? How does God see it? Yeah. You know, and I had to find that out later in life. But but yeah, I think those were the things that really played in. And like, we didn't have the sex conversation at home. Like, I don't I don't mm. remember it at all what having that conversation with like my parents. If anything, I think they were more on the side of like, just be safe. And I'm right. like, <laughs> yeah. okay, so I have permission. Right, right. Is that what you're telling yeah. me? And so like, I ran with it. And uh, yeah. 
and it impacted my life in a lot of ways. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's interesting because like, it's almost like, they're not saying anything it's like an open invitation exactly. to just do it you right. know what i mean or to or, i mean not always because i didn't i ended up actually waiting until marriage but Amen. i think that still like it's an open invitation to figure it out yourself mm -hmm. and your teachers can be really really bad you know yeah. what i mean like For sure. your teachers are the most can be the most unhealthy which was your experience the most unhealthy version of sex yeah. right. like that's the first thing that you know intrigues you and i think that with ch with the church like we have to do a better job at like saying like things like it's good mm -hmm. and god created it and yeah. this is a this is something that god wants you to enjoy in the parameters that he set mm -hmm. instead of making it so like you know no bad dirty like we only see it in that light right. mm -hmm. you know what i mean like instead of having the also the other voice that says no it is light it should be good it should be a healthy experience it's it's a great experience and i think the first time that i had um heard that perspective was when i went to marriage counseling mm -hmm. right and it was like you know, without naming names, it was the first lady of a church. And, you know, like it was on um, it was on one of those. Um, we had to fill out a little um, right, questionnaire yeah. or something like that. Mm -hmm. And like it was asking about your opinion on sex. And it was basically saying, like, you know, do you agree that, you know, sex is something that God created for you to enjoy? And at that time in my life, I was like, nobody's ever said that to me before. Mm. Wow. Like no one's ever said that to That's me wild. before. Mm. Like you, I would have to kind of dig deep to figure that out for myself. Mm. But nobody had ever said that before. So it's important, I think, to um, balance that perspective so that they don't just see the ugly, terrible side, you know, the ugly side of it. But mm. they also can give you like, here's the light in it as well. Yeah. 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 Something powerful about the way God created sex and the parameters he did set around it is because he knows how beautiful it was supposed to be wow. yeah. in the way he designed it. Mm -hmm. Everything that he did was for our protection and ultimately for our ultimate enjoyment of this experience that is to be fruitful and to multiply. It, yes, sure, it is pleasure. There's also a passage of scripture that talks about let the wife of your youth satisfy you all the days of your life. Like all that is true. So there's something to it that's enjoyable and, and, and pleasurable and allows you to grow in intimacy and all this stuff. But when we learn from other teachers, it steals the purity of what this thing is that God created. Yeah. God created it as a gift. God created it as something for us to enjoy, to grow closer with our partner and to experience in this way that is full and, and powerful. Mm -hmm. But more often than not, we get sold a cheap imitation or a cheap copy, oh, yeah. or mm -hmm. really we sell ourselves short and we feel like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just do it now. And then what we don't realize is that's why we continually fall into wanting it more and more and more and more and more mm -hmm. because we're never gonna be satisfied by what pornography can give us. We're never gonna be satisfied by what sex even outside of marriage can give us because even that is missing something. And why is it that way? It's because he created it that way. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's why this conversation should be normalized. Yeah. We should be talking about it in church. Mm -hmm. We should mm -hmm. be talking about it amongst friends and peers and, you know, um, I, I I think that, that this is a great place to start. You know what I mean? I love the way you put it into context because if you really look at it, when you're having sex outside of covenant, you are settling for the lesser version, but you're feeling, you're feeling something that is pleasant, right? But it's not what God intended it to be. So what you're aiming for is just a small, a smidge of what God really has for you in covenant. Mm -hmm. Because let me tell you, in <laughs> marriage, it is the most amazing thing and there is no shame attached right. to it, mm -hmm. which when you're having sex outside of covenant, there's so many, you get connected to someone, you get soul ties, you're wondering if this is gonna be your forever. Mm -hmm. And when you are in covenant, no, this is your forever. Yeah. You don't have to question this person. They're laying beside you and you get to be your most vulnerable self because sex is right. such a vulnerable moment. Yeah. It is so, so special. Yeah. And that's yeah. how God made it. Yeah. You know, so, and I can look back and see my first teacher was my first boyfriend mm -hmm. and his lessons to me were, if we, if, if our, if our sex life is amazing, then we're going to be amazing. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. sir, 
<laughs> what? Mm. What? Yeah. So and that was your first experience. That of was it my all. first experience, and he would push that that thought on me all the time. Like, you know, if we just had more sex, then we would be doing so much better. Yeah. And that is that that is manipulation, yeah, right there. You is. know, and yeah. it's taking out of context what God really meant to be such a pure and holy moment. Yeah. There's a passage of scripture that I love. It says that the blessing of the Lord makes one rich and adds no sorrow with it. Mm. Right. And so if you think about the blessing of the Lord being sex, it's a blessing. Yeah. When it comes from him, when it is from God, when it's in the covenant that he's established, it makes you rich and adds no sorrow with it. Mm -hmm. But see, the problem is we get into these sexual relationships and these things, and then we walk away sometimes feeling guilt, sometimes feeling shame, sometimes feeling dirty, sometimes feeling something that's less than what God would have intended. But yeah. if the blessing of the Lord makes one rich and adds no sorrow, that means that the fullness of what this should actually be like makes me rich. It yeah, grows sweeter right. and sweeter with time. Anything that's actually worth real value, like gold, what happens? The value increases over time. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the more you have a sexual relationship with somebody who you're in a covenant with, the value of that relationship, even the sexual aspect, is going to continue to get richer and richer yeah. and richer mm -hmm. over time. But when we have these skewed lenses... We don't yeah. get to fully experience the blessing that is sex. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to also, because um, Rick was really able to kind of break down like the, how sex is tied into manhood so heavily. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. And I wanted us to have an opportunity for all the ladies that are <laughs> watching to talk about how it impacts us as females. And so I know for me, I think that there is an association between sex and your value as a woman. Oh yeah. That I've literally had to check in my marriage, like just being straight up because yeah. I think that you're taught. So on our, so on y'all's end, you're taught like, you know, get as many women as you want. I think on our end, we're like, well, if we're not sexual, sexually desirable, and that doesn't even mean that you have yeah. to have sex. It literally just means, do you look at me and do you see my sex appeal? You know what I mean? Mm. Or do you look at me and desire me? You know what I mean? And if you don't, then something must be wrong with me. Like, or mm. if you're not trying to get at me in that way, something must be wrong with me. Yeah. You know, so it's it's really it's really misconstrued Absolutely. on both sides. Cause on one side it's all this it's all this pressure to, you know, to chase tail. And then on our end, it's all this pressure to like be the most appealing you know what i mean like be yeah. the most appealing tell and then and then you know there's this comparison culture where you see like you know the girls with the big booties and the girls with the yaddies and all oh, that yes. sort of stuff the yaddies the yaddies i made that up on the spot it's not a word my wife just it's made not word even word in word the urban dictionary yaddies? i just made it up i've heard yiddies yiddies uh, whatever I I, I, some <laughs> yeah, words might be triggering i apologize this is crazy i was combining yiddies and body yaddy yaddy and i put it together and i said yaddies if we can't have this type of a conversation though like, <laughs> what does that say about us? You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. there's a level of maturity to have a conversation like this because if we don't talk about it and we make it this squeamish thing where it's like, oh, I don't want to talk about that, you're never going to learn the fullness of what it could be. You're never going to mm -hmm. have yeah. the full perspective of what this thing should be. Why is it important to not have sex before marriage? Is there an actual reason? Can you tell me why? Right. And then if you can walk somebody through the value, the benefits, this is why, this is what it does for you, then they might actually be like, yo, it's worth it. Like yeah. well, it's worth it, it to, to yeah. consider being abstinent or yeah. it's worth yeah, it to consider either. not giving myself away yet. You know what I mean? So, but yeah, oh, yeah. Go ahead. Let's, let's talk about what are like the benefits of waiting until marriage. I don't mm -hmm. know if that's a question. That's no, a great, I mean, it's yeah. a great way to start though. For me, for sure. Right. I was sexually active before I got married. Um, but as I got closer to God, I became abstinent. Right start seeing women the way I was supposed to see them as sisters in Christ. Mm -hmm. Before she was my wife, she was my sister in Christ, mm -hmm. right? Ren is my sister in Christ. Mm -hmm. Ty, you're my brother in Christ. Hey, man. But, you know, <laughs> the point that I'm making is when you're so engaged in uh, me for, for a while, it was pornography and it was sexual activity. You can't see women the way they're supposed to be seen. Right. Right. So your sexual mm -hmm. desire for them is unhealthy and it's yeah. not realistic. Mm -hmm. Right. Porn also teaches you to desire women in a way that's not always what they want to be desired as. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's forceful, it's manipulative, and it's uh sometimes violent. Yeah, it's right? damaging. Yeah. What you're not for seeing sure. behind these things, it you know, when you're uh engaging in pornography, 
Um, you're not seeing that women are being forced to do things that are against their will. Mm -hmm. They're getting paid a check. They got to pay bills. They got to provide for their family. And they're being forced to do these things, right? Mm -hmm. By men that don't even care about them, don't even know their name, right? So saying all that to say, the next part of it is when you get into a marriage, right? Hopefully that's what your desire is. You know what I'm saying? Not forcing that on anybody either. Um, but when I got into marriage, I recognized that engaging in sex is a way for me to grow in the knowledge and the wisdom of my wife. Right. Yeah. There mm -hmm. is uh, certain things that are unlocked when you are having sex within a, a safety, having sex yeah. within the covenant, the grace that God has for it, like you were saying. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and it's also a, a, a way to honor God, you know, it is. Yeah. because when yeah. you wait to do it in the confines and the space and the safety of marriage, you're saying that, God, I honor you with all of my desires. Yeah. If that's the one thing that you can't let go of, that's an idol. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? That's a God in your life. Sex could be a God in your life, right? Mm -hmm. And when you give it to God, you're able to worship God with the thing that you once worshipped. Yeah. You know? I know that became a big thing for me. But now I feel like when I agree with my wife, that's what we like to say. We agree. When we agree with each other in that way, we're growing in the wisdom and the knowledge. The Bible says men, mm -hmm. grow, husbands grow in the wisdoms of, of your wife, right? Mm -hmm. That means your wife is going to change. And oh, as, yeah. as your wife changes, so you, you mm -hmm. need to know. Who they are yeah. in that season. You need to be changing. That's what my brother Free always says mm -hmm. to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If your wife is changing, you need to be yeah, changing as well. That part. Right? If she's submitted to you, she can't be submitted to an old version of you. Wow. Tying all, tying all this together, one of the ways that you grow in the wisdom of your wife or you grow in the wisdom of your husband is you agree with them. Yep. You come and you, uh, you engage in sex. Mm -hmm. So Yeah. Yeah. Mm, yeah. yeah. For, for me... In my life, before I got married, I had already committed to being celibate. I had already committed to deciding, you know what, God? Like, I want to honor you. There's a passage of scripture. I, I have it written down over here, but I might refer to it. You want to read it? Yeah, let me see that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> see, this is what I'm talking about. I'll just take the whole iPad. You could just, you, you know, you could just. Uh, wow. You did such you. a great job. Um, this, wow. this should work. Um, so the passage of scripture that I wanted to read was 1 Thessalonians 4, 3 through 7. It says, it is God's will that you should be sanctified, that you should avoid sexual immorality, that each of you should learn to control your body. What is that? Fruit of the spirit, yep. self-control in a way that is holy and honorable, not in passionate lusts like the pagans, those who don't know God, those who are not in covenant with God, those who just do whatever they want to do because right. they have no self-control. They can just do whatever. Be pure and live a holy life. And I think that the church when we did talk about sex was so adamant on purity culture without giving a reason or understanding right. exactly. or context mm -hmm. to why it should be this way. But what I learned through being a uh, celibate was the value of how it drew me closer to God, mm -hmm. how I wasn't controlled by my own sexual desires. Mm -hmm. I was able to exercise self-control and discipline and I became a better man. And then by the time that I got into a relationship, what did that allow me? Because we were both a we were both committed to celibacy, mm -hmm. to being abstinent. And what that allowed us was the opportunity to know each other at the soul level. Right. Yeah. Yes. Right. I got to know who Ren was and who Ren is before I got to know her in a sexual and intimate way physically. Uh -huh. I got to know her mind. I got to know her spirit. I got to know her soul. Everything about her before we introduced this idea of sex. Yeah. Because when you introduce sex before that, what happens is you're introducing a false version of intimacy. Mm -hmm. without yes. getting to actually know the person. Mm -hmm. But now that I know her and now that we know each other and have a deep understanding of how one another move, our emotions, thoughts, everything, there's so much freedom yeah. that mm -hmm. we experience yeah. now in our relationship when it comes to the sexual side of, of, of our marriage. Yeah. There's so much freedom because now that allows me to grow deeper with her and that allows me to grow deeper with myself because now I, I, I am not controlled by my sexual desires. Mm -hmm. So it benefits yeah. you and it's 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 holy. It's it's to recognize that your body, who you what, what you are, who God made you to be is important. Mm -hmm. And and you should see yourself as such and sometimes we give ourselves away so cheaply. Yes. Yeah. Not recognizing the value of who we are. Yeah. There's a passage that talks about not casting your your pearls, pearls to swine. swine. Yep. Mm -hmm. So if you don't see yourself as valuable, you're going to just give it out. Give it out. Give it out. Yeah. yeah. And and I get it when that's all you know. But when you know better and when you know different and when you know how God sees you and how he sees other people, yeah. say, I can't just give this away. Yeah. This, this, I can't just throw that out there. No, yeah. I, I want somebody who's going to love me the way God loves me, who's going to see me the way God sees me, who's going to treat me the way God treats me, and who's actually committed to me. 
Yeah. Not just committed exactly. to what I can do for them sexually, yeah. but yeah. actually committed to me. And yeah. then it allows my sex life when I am married to go so much deeper and be yeah. so much more impactful. Yeah. And I'll say this too, like having that um, established before we got married actually made me trust him a little bit more mm -hmm. as it relates to sex. Because I'm like, he was never in it for that to begin with. Yeah. Like we spent two years abstinent. You know what I mean? Like we spent two years getting to know each other and two years you know, committed to this thing. And so I now know going into marriage, like he's not in it for that. Yeah. It's a benefit mm -hmm. of that. But like, he's not, we didn't sign up because we were like, well, you know, let's test. Cause you know, that that's a thing too. They're like, I let's test, test, test the, drive the car water before I first to see it. It's like, it wasn't about that. Yeah. He actually loves me yeah. as I am. And I don't have to do a thing I do, but I don't have to do a thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's it's really like it 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 really def like establishes you in mm -hmm. this 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 freedom and this trust and this commitment in such a a beautiful way. And you know, I know that there are people that are watching that may be with the person that they do plan to marry mm -hmm. and they did open the door. And I would just say in this context before you're married, you won't be able to experience it at the level of freedom. Yeah. And at the level of truth, it's because especially as a person of God, you will have a conviction in, in mm -hmm. your heart. Yeah. Oh, you know, yes. like you'll have a conviction, whether it's going all the way or if it's a close call, you will have a conviction. Mm -hmm. So you'll never you won't be able to experience it in that context with the fullness, the freedom and like like because I love what you said about the freedom. Because mm -hmm. there's no, like, what does it say? Like, there's a scripture that says a marriage bed is undefiled. It's right. Mm -hmm. it's, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, there's there's a freedom. There's a beauty. There's a joy in it yeah. because you're like, this is treasure. And this person that I'm with sees it as treasure. And we're going to approach it as treasure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. yeah. And, and I want to give this disclaimer, too. Because being somebody who, prior to being married, prior to walking with God, I engaged in a lot of sexual encounters, sexual activity, all kinds of promiscuous stuff. And God was so gracious enough to give me, one, a perspective, but two, to forgive me. Right. So shame, that comes yeah. from the enemy. Yeah. If you've walked the path and you're like, man, I, hey, listen, I just got down last night. I just got freaky last night. And I don't know what to do because y'all talking and I'm like, what's going on? Yeah. God already looks at you as perfect and pure and clean because of the blood of Jesus. Yeah. So all you have to do is say, Lord, I need your help. Man, I, I need to have the fruit of the spirit of self-control. God, help me to see this thing because I want to I want to experience the gift of sex in the way that you created it. I don't want to have it with sorrow and shame mm. and guilt and regret. Who wants that? I want to experience it in a pure and undefiled way that's mm. powerful that allows me to experience what this thing was really created for yeah. and to wake up in the morning and feel good about it, to feel good yeah. about what no happened. No walk of shame. You know what I mean? Yeah, ain't no walk of shame. Yeah. No walk of shame. Thing. Ain't no walk of shame. Yeah. I don't have to walk of shame. I don't have to walk out with my, with my, uh, my well, you bag. know. My, 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 You're overnight. my shoes, my You're shoes overnight. in my hands, yeah. barefoot, yeah. struggling. Hey. hey man, I, I've been there. I have been there. So when I got baptized, literally three days later, the last guy I was talking to before my husband hit me up and I had sex with him mm -hmm. and I felt shame for three months mm -hmm. and it was so heavy. I felt convicted for three months and I was like, I made this promise to myself and I fell for it again. And I went back to God. I, I, um, I repented and, oh, I appreciate you. Mm -hmm. And when I tell you God will restore the years, the hurt, yes. all of the pain, yeah. he really yes, does. He but you really have to be open, honest, and vulnerable with the fact that you want what God wants for you. Mm -hmm. And I remember it's so funny. On our wedding night, I literally felt like I was a virgin. Like mm -hmm. I felt like I had <laughs> never, ever done it in my life. I got lingerie and I was so nervous. <laughs> I was Aww. so nervous. And but at that moment that I felt nervous, I was like, I feel like this is how it's supposed to feel. It's supposed to yeah. feel this pure. It's supposed to feel this new. Mm -hmm. And God yeah. really made me feel like this yeah. was like my first time and it was wow. so special. Yeah. Yeah. That. that that restoring yeah. of the years that, that the enemy tried to take, he thought he had, mm -hmm. you know, like that happened. Like, and that's another part of sex um that I don't think many people understand when they when they get married. Like mm -hmm. all of your previous encounters they they come with you mm. you know like even if you're not married like if you're having sex with somebody that's a narcissist if you're mm -hmm. having sex with somebody that's aggressive manipulative mm. 
and then you take that and move on to the next person. Most of the time, because what we talked about soul ties, because of the soul tie, you're connected to that person. Just imagine every time you're having sex, you're giving a piece of your heart away. Right. You give them one piece of your heart to this person that's manipulative. You give them one piece of your heart to this person that's a narcissist. And now all of a sudden, because you give them their a piece of your heart, they have a, it's the opposite. So yeah. now you're carrying the things that they have and you're not understanding. I've never been a narcissist mm. before. I've never been manipulative before. Why am I now all of a sudden feeling this way or acting yeah. towards acting towards people this way? Wow. Um, but once once you recognize that that thing is. Uh, something to be held at very high value. Yeah. It's more important to me. It's more important than money. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, like Absolutely. I feel like your body is because the you got to think yeah. about what God calls the body. He says it's a temple for the Holy Spirit to dwell in. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit ain't dwelling in money. Wow. The Holy Spirit ain't dwelling in a car, mm -hmm. jewelry. You know your your career, right? He can be in those things, but he doesn't mm -hmm. live in those things. Yeah. He lives in your body. Mm -hmm. So when you give your body. I'm going to say this and then I'm going I'm to stop talking. I remember when I was engaged in pornography in a very, very unhealthy, crazy way, right? There was a, a, a thought that I had that if the Holy Spirit is within me at all times, at like wow. at all times, yeah. if I'm I, watching I, porn and masturbating, the Bible talks about grieving the Holy Spirit. Yeah, I'm having a an encounter with something that's not even loving me back, but the thing that loves me, the Holy mm. Spirit, the person that loves me, the Holy Spirit is in me crying out, mm. telling me I don't need to be doing this. There's a healthy version mm -hmm. of what you're doing and mm -hmm. you're forfeiting and you're giving yourself away to this thing mm -hmm. just because you want instant gratification. Yeah, I'm grieving the Holy Spirit every single time I give myself to somebody that's not my wife or, or my husband, mm. you yeah. know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And that and that's really what it is. Can I see this again? I'll just grab the whole You got it? Okay. Um, because you said it about your bodies. Um, 1 Corinthians 6, 18 through 20 says, Flee from all sexual immorality. All other sins that persons or people commit are outside of the body. For whoever sins sexually sins against their own body. Mm -hmm. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. price. There we go. Back to that thing about you being expensive. Mm -hmm. You cost something. You're valuable. Yeah. To give yourself away freely, you're missing something. Yeah. You're not seeing it right. But you can't charge yourself for what you don't know. So now that we're talking about it, now that we're having a conversation that's a little bit healthier and gives us more of a perspective, you can be responsible for what you hear. Mm -hmm. And it closes by saying this. It says, therefore, honor God with your bodies. So if I see myself as valuable, if I see myself as priceless, if I see this thing as something that God is ultimately warning me against, that means that there's more of an impact on me that it has than I even am letting on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's a big deal because the thing about it is it is an amazing, sex is a gift, bro. Sex is amazing. Mm -hmm. It can be a very beautiful thing. And because it is, it's very easy to get addicted to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whether it's through, you know, you watch pornography and, and you think it's like, well, it's just me. Like I'm the only one here. It's the same thing when Jesus said, those who lust with looking at a woman, mm -hmm. you've committed adultery in right. your heart. Yep. So he wasn't even trying to be like, oh, yeah, you, you know, you, you know, cut out your eye. Because that's what he says. He says, he said, gouge out your eye, basically. So, like, if your hand <laughs> cut, causes you to sin, yeah. cut off that hand. That's, yeah. like, that's as far as he went to say it. I mean, but he's, he's expressing to us. Point. He's expressing to us the significance, though. You know what I mean? Like, Drove it home. Yeah. Like, there's a significance to what he's saying because it matters. Mm -hmm. It matters because it actually impacts you deeper than you right. recognize. Yeah. Yeah. And Jesus, this is the beautiful thing about Jesus. When he says that, he knows we're not going to gouge our eyes out. He knows we're not going to cut our hands off. But he's saying, dude, the fact that this is something that's ruling and reigning in your life, you, you, everybody, every human being, Every man and woman has probably looked at somebody. Yeah, don't lie on the pod. <laughs> yeah, you have looked at somebody and yeah. you've had a fantasy. Mm -hmm. And what, is, what does God say about it? It says, yeah, that's just as bad as you going and having adultery. Mm -hmm. So this is the beautiful thing about Jesus. If we bring it back to, you know, him removing the shame, him forgiving us, that's how we can navigate. He mm -hmm. forgives you. Yeah. But it's only because of him. All of us yeah. in our best attempt, even those of us who didn't have sex, in our best attempt, we're still in need of the Holy Spirit. We're still in need of God. We're still in need of his grace and his covering. And so, you know, um, involving him in that process, you know, 
uh, exercising self self control. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it goes back to how you see yourself. I think it all like sex, all really comes down to how you see yourself and what you place your value in. Yeah, because I think that you know, well, first of all, I think that we put sex on a pedestal. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think just as human beings, we put whether Christian or non Christian, whatever, we put it on this pedestal and it's like the end all, be all, like, gotta have it. Like, and then, like, when you're Christian, it's like, oh, you get married, you have sex. That's like the great, and it's like, yeah, it is, but I, that's not all of life. That's yeah. not even close to like all of life, all that life has to offer. It's just one thing. So the question becomes is like, am I putting all of my value into one action? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And all of my life life. and all of my energy and all of my aim is towards this one thing. And that's when it becomes a God. You know what I mean? Like that's Mm -hmm. when it literally becomes a God to you. And I think God saw how beautiful it was, but left unhinged how dangerous it is because you put it on this pedestal and it becomes something that you worship because you can't live without it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like even those who are, you know, maybe I think about nuns, right? Like but let's say I'm speaking to a nun, you know what I mean? Like I would tell them to be honest, it's probably a less distracted life for you. It is. <laughs> it's probably a less I distracted life is. for you. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you have the freedom to move without this intense tugging to something that all the world is trying to go after. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So we got to have that reality check. Like, okay, this is an amazing thing. At the end of the day, it's not everything. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, And it's true. Like if I were, I know I said I would elaborate, but when I was actively engaging in a sexual lifestyle driven by my sexual desires, driven by my sexual immorality, ultimately that's what it was. Everything was about trying to get with women. Mm-hmm. Every, I mean, everything, even down to like being an influencer. I was like, oh yeah, the more followers I have, the more likely it is that I'm able to get more women. So it's easier for me to have sex. Yeah. If I go out, mm-hmm. oh wow, yeah. you know what? I am looking at women. Oh, you know what? Uh, oh, I, what am I doing tonight? Oh, I didn't find a girl at this club that I was at to sleep with. That's all right. I'll text another girl. That's fine. Not a big deal. Mm-hmm. And so everything was driven by sex and I wasn't able to actually be effective in really my purpose. I was so focused on, Mm -hmm. I need to get sex. I need to have sex. I need to go and do this. That it was driving my life. So it is powerful. It is beautiful. It is amazing. But it can be very, very destructive because it's super distracting at the end of the day. It can be a huge distraction. And I would argue to say that outside of marriage, it is. Because if it's driving you, how are you going to be able to really be focused on what you need to actually do? You're going to be driven by sex. I would, what were you about to say, baby? You go. I was about to say, sex and marriage could still be a distraction. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, because you could, people think that all of the things, all of the stuff that I stopped struggling with are going to go away when I when I get married and I have yep. 30 times more sex because I have the person I'm going to have sex. No, you got to gotta keep in mind that your partner might not want to have sex tonight. You right. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, Facts. Mm-hmm. And then I think it goes back to communication. Right? Like Mm -hmm. in marriage. I know it's not a marriage part, but it's like if I have this unspoken desire of having sex and I don't say that to my wife or she's not picking up on the signs that I'm putting out and it's like we just moving around, that's that's a problem. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because there's no communication. Right? But those things have to happen in marriage in order for you to get to the promised land. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? But it's like people people think that oh, nah, I have a problem with sex right now and I'm single. When you get into marriage, those same problems are going to be highlighted. Hello. Oh, right? Yeah. If, they don't right? have moose. You, you no. think, oh, I'm accessory. celibate. But here's the thing. People think they could be celibate, but to escape the thoughts that they have. Like, you're going to get into marriage and you're going to be having sex with whoever you're married to and still desire other people right. because mm-hmm. you didn't deal with the problem that you had before you got married. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. There's something that's a little bit like left, but also like the repercussions of sex. Mm. You can have a baby with this person. Oh my or, God, please bring it up. Or, what or else? get sickness Yeah, in that area. Very true. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So STD. one of the biggest things I was thinking of was, I was reading Genesis the other day and it talked about how Adam had a child at a hundred and something years old. 
mm-hmm. and he was made in his image. Now, yeah. when God created us, mm. we were made in his image. So th- when I think about having a mm. son, I want him to be just oh, like yes. my husband. Oh, my God, yes. Just like him. That's right. And That's unfortunately, right. I did have an abortion when I was younger. And I mm. just thinking about the f- if I had a child with the person that I was with, that is not someone that I wanted to be mm. caring for that was in his image, per mm. se. But I thank God for, again, you know, the, the, what was the scripture? You're talking about renewing, undefiled? Renewing the years. Oh, restoring the years. Restoring the years. Yeah. Restoring yeah. the years. And also healing from that moment because yeah. I know I'm not the only one who has had it. I yeah. know I'm not the only one who has been in situations where a partner gets aggressive. And that's mm. something that we've also had to heal through together because there was, I remember a specific time we went to the gym and this was a time where I was, God was really, really speaking to me about healing from a traumatic experience I had with my first boyfriend. And Rick was about to put a plate on me. I was laying on the floor and I got freaked out. And this is Rick. Mm. This is someone that God has told me he's going to trigger yeah. you because he's the healthy version of what I intended mm. intended for you to experience. Mm-hmm. And that moment was, what ended up happening was he, we prayed in the gym. And I was like, oh, oh. he said, do you want to pray? And I was like, oh, we're right here, we're in the gym. <laughs> but God set up that moment because he knew I needed it. And he knew yeah. Rick would be soft enough to take the time to pray with me. Yeah. So it's so important who you decide to connect with because does that person actually care for you? Yeah. You know, do they really honor your body or do they just want your body? Right. Yeah. There's a stark difference. A oh, very, very yes. big difference. That, um, can, I, can I say yeah, something ahead. to that? Uh, it's never easy hearing that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. As this is my wife, right? Yeah. Um, but it I think one of the things that I really had to keep in mind when I finally got to a space where I really wanted to honor God with my body before her mm-hmm. is that the way I engage with any other woman is now gonna be a standard mm-hmm. for that woman. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? You you understand what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Mm-hmm. Like how how the effects of her her exes that the the effects that her exes have had on her with her encounters with them there's something that we're working through together yeah. right so the right person for you will be able to work through them mm-hmm. but if you don't have to go through that don't yeah. right. you know yes. what i'm saying yeah. like you don't have to don't. Please. you like yeah. and it's like thank i thank god that he's given me the grace mm-hmm. you know he's yeah. given us the grace it's not just me it's us mm-hmm. we're working through it together but it's like you don't even have to put yourself through that stuff. Yeah. You know, like yeah. that's a lot of work mm. and it's heavy. Mm. <laughs> it's not easy work at all. You know, yeah. so. this, this brings us back to the, the reason why we need to have an episode on red flags oh, yeah. <laughs> because sure. those were the things yeah. I played with. Yeah. 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 I think I want to close Thank this um, really quickly. I kind of, I want to do something. I want each of you guys to speak to, and I'll go last, but Speak to the person that you once were and tell them what you wish you would have known before engaging in this path or your journey of your sexual experiences. All right, I'll go ahead and and chime in for this one. Don't allow the pressures of people and culture and anything or anyone else coerce you. I'll use the word coerce you or convince you that you're lacking something or that you're missing out if you don't have sex before you get married. Mm -hmm. Don't allow them to to convince you. Don't, Don't allow pornography to convince you. Don't allow TV to convince you. Don't allow anything else to convince you that you're missing out because that's where the, the trouble comes in is that you are less than if you don't. Or if you don't do this, you're not that. Or whatever the case may be, allow yourself, as you're hearing this, because I truly believe that we are responsible for what we hear. When we hear information, now that I've heard it, I am the judge of what I get to do with it. I get to decide how am I going to navigate this situation. And what I would say is now that you've heard all of what we talked about, consider it, pray about it, and really Mm -hmm. ask God, like, how should I navigate this area of my life? Mm-hmm. I want to be everything that you created me to be because I believe every person in Gen 1 wants to be everything that God created them to be. And if that's what you want, submit this area just like every area of your life to him and ask him to help you, to lead you, to guide you, and to bring people around you that can 
come alongside you as you do it. That's good. Yeah. Um, take your time. Take your time because whoever you're talking to will reveal themselves, whether mm. you're trying to see if they actually care about you, if you're trying to see if that is the person that God really has for you. Because someone once said, uh, <laughs> Kanye, I know can cancel culture is crazy, oh, but really in one of his songs, he said, um, what if, what, what, what was it? What if Eve made apple juice? You know the lyrics? Oh, uh, that sounds so familiar. I know that. What if Eve would have made apple juice? You know what I'm talking about? That's what you're you going to do about. what Adam do or say, baby, let's put this back on the yes, tree. Yes, and yes, yes. Apple we, have we have everything we need. need. Right, yeah. right. Really take your time because God will reveal to you like he did with my partner. If that man is going to speak to you in a way that will actually settle you down because mm -hmm. I, I constantly went to people that were sparking my fire, which was not good. I needed someone to, to help me find the peace that I am connected to with God. Mm -hmm. So take your time because people will reveal themselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really good. Those people you trying to impress, they're not really for you. <laughs> Simple yeah. as that, you know. Yeah. Like the stories that you get by stacking up your tropes, trophies, if you will, they don't mean nothing, mm. you know. And those women that you're dealing with, they're still daughters, mm. they're sisters, they're valued. They will be so wives good. one day. They so will be good. CEO bosses, whatever. Like you can't, you can't do somebody dirty and expect them later on down the line to automatically forgive you, right? Yeah. I know we're called to forgive, but. I think about it like like there's people in Hollywood right now that have engaged in sexual activities with somebody um, when they were younger. And those people have desires to be actors and uh, rappers and all of these things. But the gatekeepers, the people that will give you the jobs is somebody that you did dirty. Mm -hmm. You know, like I'm thinking about Issa Rae. I'm thinking about Beyonce. I'm like, yo, like if you would have saw these women the way God saw them. If you would have saw them in a, like a high wow. regard or wow. respect for them, at least to yeah. say, OK, you know, wow, uh, I'm interested in you. Do you want to engage or like, right. I don't know. I feel like I'm I'm going somewhere. Then I lost it. I but got you. at exactly. the end of the day, stop trying to be loyal to people that's not loyal to you. Yeah, because mm. it's a it's a validation thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's an image thing. You know, I'm statue. Look at my statue. I had sex with this many women. Shut the hell with that. Mm. <laughs> for yeah. real. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Good, baby. Um, okay, so I, I'm going to speak to the person who has probably waited a long time and is maybe on the verge of being like, okay, should I really do this? I just want to say it's worth it. Um, really, really simple. Um, it's worth it. Um, and I wouldn't say that if I didn't believe it. I think that I saved myself a lot of unnecessary trauma. Mm -hmm. um, I think that, you know, going into it, knowing that even though yes there's there's nerves because like I totally related to what you were saying mm -hmm. but there's also like this freedom mm -hmm. I feel like I would have much preferred going into my first sexual encounter with somebody that I knew was like down for me and mm -hmm. really really loved me and valued me to the point where he is going to spend the rest of his life with me he committed to the rest of his life with me um because there's a sense of freedom and safety and confidence and assurance that I went into it that made the first time way better than what it could have ever been if I had gone to the first knucklehead that approached me. So I would say it's mm -hmm. worth it. And don't place your value in that. Don't place your value in that. Because people are going to say, eh, oh, you're the virgin. Oh, you know, and people are going to say that. And those same people are going to respect it once you actually get there. So mm -hmm. I would say, um, yeah, keep it. Keep it and respect respect yourself. Mm -hmm. Respect what you set for yourself. Respect the standards that you set for yourself. Um, and eventually, you'll find your way. Yeah. Um, I'll say this too, because yeah, you, said, you said virgin, and there may be, again, to that point, there might very well be some people who are saying, hey, you know what? After hearing all of what y'all talked about, I want to commit to abstinence. Mm -hmm. I want to be like, y'all, I want to I wanna try this thing out and be celibate and know that it's worth it too. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah. it's worth it. For sure. I'll tell you that every single thing that I ever had outside of marriage doesn't even come close. And I mean, come close. I'm saying it real <laughs> nice and slow for you. It doesn't That's even come crazy. close to the beauty of experiencing sex within the confides of marriage mm -hmm. that is aligned by God, sent from God, 
and honoring God. Mm. It's the most beautiful thing. And it's only going to get better yep. over time mm -hmm. and time and time. And you've got plenty of time. time. You got time. Oh, yeah. You've got plenty time. of time. Yeah. <laughs> time and time. And we land in this place. And on that note, wow. thank you guys yeah, for please. tuning into Help this him. lovely conversation. <laughs> and we are so excited to once again shout out. We're going to see y'all on July the 28th for our first ever in-person Go Night. So the Let's Go Squad that's on go. the other side of that camera, we're going to be in the same room with you. And we cannot wait to see you. So if you haven't already made plans, please make plans to be there. We really want to see you. We really want to talk to you. Ty's going to have a Jerry Curl. That's right. Ty's not going to have a Jerry Curl. And on that note, <laughs> Ice Cube. Peace. He had one. He had one. Love y'all. Peace. <laughs> Love y'all. Peace. So the question is, what is Go Night? Go Night is an opportunity for us to connect to have community and for young creatives and people who are just in this range of 18 to 35 who are trying to figure out what is it that God designed me for? What is it that God created me to do? Why am I here on this earth? And we can't do that alone because we were not created to be islands. So let's come together, let's talk, let's connect, and let's grow so that we can become everything that God created us to be together. See you at Go Night. Let's go.